Hi guys, I want to talk today a little bit about uh, the different version of the tortoise machine called the Smail. Uh, this uh, actually has the integrated logic in it that will allow you to address each machine directly with your DCC system. On my system I use Digitrax and I can operate each of these switch machines directly with the throttles and uh, that makes it somewhat easier if you are uh, looking at a machine that's on the other side of the table or somewhere distant from your control. You can also, and one of the things, reasons I like this is that in the uh, circuitry, they also provide three contacts, as you can see right here. Uh, there are three little contacts, the center one is the uh, one side of the track power and you are providing the circuit. It's a momentary contact that will allow you uh, to touch either of the other contacts and operate the switch machine. Uh, you do not need to hold the power on, you just uh, momentarily uh, touch it and therefore uh, works great with push buttons on your switch panel, which is what I use. The reason that I use these machines rather than the normal tortoise is primarily because of the addressable function. Uh, the contacts on the top row are exactly the same as on the tortoise. There are two F, uh, single pole uh, double throw switches mounted inside or integrated into the circuitry. The two outside contacts on the top are the track power, which operates the motor. And that then allows you, whenever the track power is on, allows you to uh, address the circuitry and throw the switch whichever way you want it to go. Or you can use the uh, previously mentioned uh, push button capability, a momentary contact with uh, the three additional uh, attach points on this machine. Yes, the Smail is somewhat more expensive than the Tortoise, but I think if you are looking towards future uh, operation of your layout, maybe with uh, fully integrated computer operation and the JRMI uh, system, uh, it allows all kinds of flexibility that you don't have with the pure uh, simple Tortoise machine. The little push button switch that you see right here um, allows you to program the address into the switch machine much as you program uh, your road numbers into the uh, locomotives. Uh, in this case you don't have to have a programming track, you don't have to use your throttles. Well actually you do use the throttles because what you wh what you do is once this is connected to track power and it has been on for five seconds or more, you push this button and the little LED to the right of it will flash. And when it's flashing, you can then send to, through the track, through your DCC system, you can send the code that you would like to operate the switch uh, with and then tell it to open or close and that programs the machine. Once you've done that, then it will respond after that forever. Uh, until you change it again uh, to that particular address. These machines all come rather than uh, programmed for number three as locomotives do, they're all programmed for number one when you uh, get them out of the box. Again, uh, it's very similar in operation to the way that the uh, tortoise works, uh, but it has the additional capabilities of being addressable and uh, having the, the logic and the system integrated into the, the box itself, into the circuitry on board. Uh, one additional thing that I really find useful, and it saves me so much frustration, is the little um, connectors that go onto uh, the circuit board in the uh, smale. You can also use this one as a connector for the tortoise machines. They are screw terminals 
and they fit directly onto the circuit board. This little one is the three uh, connections that I mentioned previously uh, for operating, if you like, with a push button. So you actually, again, have two different ways of operating the smale. And that little connector just goes into the holes on the circuit board and then has to be soldered, which is very simple to solder that. The other one then connects on the opposite side to the holes on the top of the circuit board that you would normally try to put little thin wires into. And now you have screw terminal access to all 11 of the connections on that um, circuit board. And it's much easier to use that uh, for connecting your wires and if you subsequently make a change or you want to take advantage of one of the SPDT switches that are built in, single pole double throw switches, there's two of them, then the middle contacts here operate those. You can change them, you can rewire, and it's much easier than trying to unsolder from the uh, circuit board because all you have to do is uh, run a, a screwdriver. I have a little electric uh, powered, battery powered screwdriver that um, I, I guess I use a different uh, bit in there that's a little thinner because this wide one won't go in there but uh, you, when you buy something like this you usually get a small screwdriver head that will go in and, and operate those screws. At any rate that is uh, the smale machine other than what I've just talked about it operates the same as the tortoise it's mounted the same However, I'd like to show you my method for mounting these uh, smales, which will work just as well with the tortoise and a lot less frustrating. Uh, I will show you how to use a different wire. I buy a piano wire, a 0.032 uh, that you can buy in quantity from a number of uh, sources on the, uh, on the internet. And it's a much stronger wire that goes in here. And I'll show you a different method of mounting the whole thing and making it work without having to get under the table and um, try to find the proper place to mount the, the machine and also uh, get the little wire up through the hole in your layout and through the small uh, hole in the throw bar of the, of the turnout. Uh, this is not a system that I came up with myself. I'd like to give credit to my friend Al, who is uh, the operating member of our small railroad club. And I tried to get him to make this video and he wasn't interested. So I just find it so much easier to do it this way. And on my layout, I have approximately 30 of these male uh, turnout control motors and I have yet to have one not work after I use this system of mounting it. Um, I just find it so much easier and a lot less time under the table and a lot easier to work with than uh, the way that uh, Circuitron would have you mount the uh, tortoise or the smale. So we'll go into that next. I like to do all of my wiring that I can get done prior to getting under the table. I find that at my age, I don't like working down under there. It's not bad uh, if you don't have a bad back, but I do have a bad back and I don't like to spend a lot of time on the, on the uh, floor down there uh, trying to crawl around. So the benefit of these little screw terminals that I have now soldered on to the circuit board is that you can put those wires in just like that with very little effort. You don't have to try to get the solder to stick and, and so forth. Um, and it, it really makes a much uh, neater, much uh, simpler um, system of, of wiring. And again, once, once the, the wires are in there, now that little small screw just doesn't want to 
there we go. Uh, once the wires are in there, then everything is done. You don't have to be working with this uh, underneath the table in small cramped spaces and getting frustrated. So I will do all of the wiring uh, of both of these terminals prior to, uh, to getting underneath uh, the table. Again, this is the system that is uh, unique to the smale, and that is that once I have these underneath, all I need to do to operate the machine is put track power on to the smale, which is the outer two connectors on the long uh, uh, connector. And if I touch just momentarily, either of these, which can be accomplished with a simple push button, 60 cents a piece or whatever. You touch it just momentarily and it causes the machine to go all the way to the other side. So those three are the control that I use for all of my switch panels. And you can imagine how simple that is once you, once you get it all hooked up. Here's a uh, situation where I'm operating the switch shown uh, from the throttle uh, using the integrated circuitry in the smale. Uh, in this case, the uh, switch is numbered, it's been assigned number 23. So I push the switch button. 23 comes up because that's the one I've been using. So the number's already in there. Otherwise, I just enter the number. The T indicates that it's thrown uh, and that corresponds to the T on the bottom of the throttle. If I push C now, that will change the position of the, of the turnout. You can hear it move maybe. See the points move. And now on the throttle, it shows that it's in the C position. That will be the case no matter what you do. If you go operate another switch and you come back to this one, it will show you the position and you can operate it using only the throttle to throw the switch. But also, I have a switch panel down here that is operated by push buttons and has lights to indicate the, the turnout position. In this case, we're look, working with this turnout right here, and it is now shown to be on the sidetrack. If I push the button momentarily, it'll switch to the other position and the points have, have changed. So I can operate it either with the throttle or from the panel with the push buttons. Interestingly, even if I operate using the throttle, the um, lights will indicate properly because they're being operated not by the switch or buttons on the control panel, but by the single pole double throw switch mounted in the integrated logic of the uh, smale machine. And that allows you, if, you're, if somebody's operating the trains and using the throttle to change a switch and you happen to be here by the panel, you can still see what position the, switch, the turnout is without uh, having a wreck of some sort. Um, I will show you, uh, once I get all of these on here, I'm going to show you that I add a step in here, which is not necessary. You can work with these if you like. I find the less time I spend actually touching and manipulating the switch machine once, once I have it mounted underneath the table and all aligned and working properly, the fewer times I touch it, the better I am. I just don't like to mess with them. I don't find that, that they're... Uh, strong enough uh, to withstand a whole lot of pushing around and soldering and so forth. Plus, it's pretty close work in here. So I'm going to add one further step, but let me get the rest of these wired in and then I'll show you what I do next. Okay, I have finished connecting all of the wires that I will use. I only use one of the two um, single pole double throw switches that are part of the, the integrated uh, circuitry. Uh, I have all of the wires on the switch machine now so that I don't need to do any soldering or screwing of terminals or anything underneath the table. Notice that they are about uh, oh, a foot long. And what I now do, which I find makes my life much easier, it's not a required step by any stretch of the imagination. You could, uh, could have put all these wires on later, run them all. 
But what I have found to be very helpful for me because it makes my time under the table much easier and much shorter is I mount, I then connect these to another screw terminal block so that I can work with it rather than touching this, the switch machine. I work with the terminal block. The ones that I prefer for this part of the operation are these European style where the wires go in each end and uh, the uh, uh, screws clamp down to, to uh, tighten the wires. You can see that there's uh, a, a hole that runs all the way through them. Now, these come, at least the ones that I have found, all come in a 12-unit uh, uh, block. I don't need all 12 units, and they say that you can cut them to any, any size that you want. So that's what I have done. I only need eight of the wires um, uh, that I'll be using. If ever I change, I can just unscrew these, put in a longer block, and away I go. And it's quite easy to um, cut these with a uh, uh, rail saw, whatever you have happen, uh, have handy to use. Uh, this is the one that I use. Uh, it works very good. You just cut between these and you've got the two pieces. Then I've got these that I use for wiring uh, other places where I don't need as many connectors. So what I'll do next is I will connect all of these wires to the terminal uh, uh, in an, an order that I've decided works best for me. And once I have that done, then I'll have the complete unit ready to mount underneath the table. Okay, as you can see now, I've got the switch machine completely wired. Um, the terminal block is ready to be fastened to uh, the bottom of your table. However you do it, I like to fasten them to the side support pieces wherever I can. Two screws, uh, pretty simple. Uh, I use the kind of screws that are sharp, almost self-starting screws that don't require you to drill uh, starter holes. So as a whole, this is now ready to go. I put a couple of little uh, tie wraps on there to kind of keep the wires neat so that they're not spread all over underneath the table. But as far as the wiring is concerned, uh, I'm ready to go. Switch machine needs a couple of things. First off, it needs to have you put the uh, mechanical uh, piece in that causes the tension on the throw bar, the little wire that goes up through here. That just goes, slides in either end. Uh, and there's three holes in it. I use the center one. You, if you needed to, you could use either of the side ones. It works fine. I like to very gently push the uh, arm to the center of the machine so that it is centered for all of my work that I do in the future, uh, it makes it just that much easier to um, uh, get the alignment correct underneath the table. I like to, at this point, uh, put the screw into the hole and uh, run it down so that when I actually am working under the table that the uh, screw will go in uh, easier. It's a self-tapping type of screw. You're going into a plastic block and it, the first time you do it, it's rather difficult. Uh, the instructions that come with the tortoise and the snail tell you not to go all the way in. Uh, in my case, I'm going to do that because eventually I want it to go all the way in. And I bring it back out. And I actually put it do it again just to make sure that when I'm under the table, I won't have a lot of difficulty getting that screw in. Then once I've done that, I take the screw out because you'll see in a few moments um, that I don't hook this up exactly the way Circuitron would have you do it. Uh, try not to lose that screw. I haven't been able to find anything exactly like it at the hardware store, so they're hard to replace. So at this point, our 
uh, machine is almost ready to go. There's one further step that they don't talk about uh, in the instructions anywhere, and that is I'm going to take a small piece of double-sided tape, comes in a roll like this, very light, um, and mount it on the bottom here. And you can imagine what I'm going to do with that. Um, this is one of the things that makes working under the table so much easier. So I'm just going to cut, cut a strip about A long. And I'm going to put that on the bottom, uh, in this case the top of the machine, however you want to look at it, and peel off the other side so that if I can get a hold of the strip, so that now I have a very sticky piece of tape that will hold, hold this uh, machine up against the table from the bottom side while I get it all positioned exactly the way I want it. So at this point, we're ready to move to the underside of the table. Okay, rather than work under the table where it's not only difficult to get lighting, it's also difficult to get your camera mounted properly and so forth, I made this little piece of uh, simulated table to show you how I perform the next steps. Uh, I have been using on my layout the microengineering uh, turnouts. Um, I'm not sure that they're better than the others. I got started with these and I've worked with them all along. The one thing that I will tell you that I think is best, on the back of microengineering there was a little spring that was mounted there. It's used to hold the, the points against the rail once, once the the switch has been moved if you're doing it manually. That little spring uh, provides some additional tension that has to be overcome uh, with the switch machine and it's my recommendation as well as the recommendation of many others that have done this that you cut that little spring off of there. Uh, I didn't do this on some of my early installations and it caused problems because it requires that the switch machine be mounted in exactly the right spot and I find that very frustrating to do. So once you take that spring off of there, the switch machine, especially with the uh, stronger uh, tension wire, will uh, keep the uh, points against the rail without any problems and you don't need that spring. So cut that off before you mount uh, the track. If you are doing this on an already installed track, you'll have to modify the procedure somewhat, but I actually think this would be easier for most of you that have uh, the turnouts already mounted, the procedure that I'm going to use. If you're starting from scratch, then of course you have to uh, have a hole where the switch throw bar is located. Uh, Circuitron and their instructions say to, to drill a quarter inch, use a quarter inch bit I prefer to use a uh, slightly larger hole. It gives me a little more room for error. And so I use a 3 8 inch bit. And that has, I, I don't see any real problems with that. Maybe when you uh, get around to ballasting the track, you wish you hadn't, but I think I'll figure something out by then. Uh, I'm not particularly worried about that. Um, then, uh, in order to find the exact hole, what I have done in the past is I have just taken a pencil and marked on either side of the, the, the ties that surround the throw bar and just mark it onto the board and then either end of the actual throw bar and you can very easily center it under that. And with a 3 8 inch hole, you have enough room for error. You don't need that much room, but uh, I just... I just make, I think it makes the installation of these machines so much nicer in terms of um, getting everything lined up and um, th they give you a template and everything for underneath and I'm telling you, I tried that the first couple times. It took me all day to install one switch machine. Now I can get these switch machines installed in and operating in under an hour each, uh, including all the wiring. So. Uh, I just find this a much simpler uh, system and, and uh, works better. 
Okay, now I, I will tack that uh, turnout down so that it doesn't move and then we'll proceed with the rest of the uh, installation. Okay, our next step is we're going to eventually use this 0.032 inch uh, piano wire. Again, you can order it from any number of places. I happen to get it from a place called Component Supply. Now you can look them up online. They have many different sizes, but I use 0.032. Uh, it's 36 inches long. And I've got all 36 inches here. And I'll show you how we're going to use this. It'll last quite a while. I can install about seven switch machines with this. But the the hole in the throw bar is not big enough. It won't this wire is is not is much bigger than the one sent with uh, the Smeo or the tortoise and so it won't go in there so the thing that we have to do is just drill that out and this is a number 60 drill um, so I've just drilled out the hole in the um, in the throw bar and now the piano wire will go down through there like so and if you were under the table, it would fall all the way down. This is too long right now. But what you do to keep it from going through is you crimp on a connector on the end of it. So that then, even though if you're using a shorter piece of this wire, or it goes, you've got a lot more room under the table, this will stop at the top and the wire will hang down underneath. And that, to me, is a very important part of the whole process because that wire hanging down is what you're going to use to align the machine underneath. Let me get a shorter piece of wire set up here and then we'll uh, uh, mount the switch machine. Okay, as you can see now, I've got my piano wire with the crimped on connector at the end to keep it from falling completely through the track. I don't need anybody up on the top side to help me do this, which is one of the benefits of this system. I'm able to do this all by myself with one trip under the table. Uh, so once I have this installed with the uh, piano wire hanging down, I come in with my switch machine and the wiring, and I'll show you how that works in a little bit. And I'm under the table now, and I all I have to do is to feed that piano wire through the little crossbar that creates the, the tension. And I've got this turned sideways so that you can see what's, what I'm doing. Uh, when I go to mount it, I will turn the machine so that it is in the general direction that the switch is running, which is from left to right, as you can tell on top of the of the board. Uh, the process will be the same when I go to align it. But what I'm going to do is because I've got the two-sided tape on top, once I stick that up against the plywood, it will stay there. And that will be the position of the machine. If I get it slightly wrong, I can fix it. But you can already begin to see what's going to happen here. I have the, the uh, machine's throw a mechanism centered or nearly so it's all right it doesn't it's not that critical and again as I said I've installed many of these already and, and they this system just works flawlessly every single time now so what I'm going to do is I you can see that I by moving the switch back and forth I'm actually causing the wire to move so I'll know when I have it centered and as I move it towards the camera and away from the camera, it forces the, the wire uh, in opposite directions as well. So by, by moving this just correctly, you can get the wire perfectly centered in, in both left and right, forward and back positions, so that it's right directly over the hole in that throw piece. When you get it there, you just push it up, make the, the tape hold at the top, and, and stick it there. Now again, keep in mind that I can't show you on this little mock-up how that would work because the machine should be turned a quarter turn so that it is aligned with the track. And it doesn't have to be exact. 
Guys will tell you that you should drill holes down through the track and draw a line and when get your template all lined up. I have found it does not make a bit of difference. You can be off a little bit and it, and it won't hurt. What's important is that you have the switch machine so that this wire is free flowing. And I've got it stuck up under there and that wire is perfectly aligned up with the hole. It, it's sitting not firmly against it, but it's in the right spot. Now, what comes next is what is the key to this whole thing. Instead of trying to stick it in that little hole, get everything lined up, I'm going to use another uh, crimp on connector. This one is a number four um, circle uh, connector. Um, and the reason that it's circle is because you're going to screw that onto the, the machine just as you, you would if you had uh, pushed this wire into the little hole and then um, put the screw in to hold it in place. I'm going to crimp this on to the end of the piano wire and that will then be my connection to the switch machine. And I'll, I'll do that and then I'll um, uh, come back and show you the rest of the operation. Okay, I now have the connector crimped on to the uh, end of the piano wire and all we have left to do to mount this is to put the screw in and tighten it down. And I tighten it, not so that it is completely tight, because you want it to be able to turn just slightly, uh, freely. The screw is to only hold it in place. So I take it to about there, and you, you can see it move back and forth just a little bit. You can feel it. I might, might have it just a little bit too tight, but there, you can see it so that it's not completely tight on there. Now, as you move this back and forth, and you can, you can test it now with your fingers, moving the very gently, moving the throw machine from side to side, and you will see if this were turned the right direction, you would be able to see the top moving the, the points back and forth. Okay, here I have turned the machine so that it is aligned with the track, more or less, again, doesn't have to be perfect. And you can't quite see, let me see if I can get the camera up, eh, probably not enough, but uh, you can't quite see the, the points move, but as I move the uh, throw machine from side to side, you'll see that the points have moved and you can actually test it before you make the final connections down below. Once you have the uh, switch machine positioned where you want it, you'll have this little piece sticking up here, but we'll cut that off later, that's not a problem. But now that the machine is mounted under there, you can take three or four screws uh, that are self-tapping, uh, very sharp points on them. I use cabinet screws uh, I don't know whether you can see this or not. It's a very sharp point. I don't need to pre-drill the hole because it's going to be hard to drill that hole up in there. But this will start itself with just a little bit of pressure. And you can hold that up there very easily to hold it up there. That's probably the hardest part of the whole operation. And screw your switch machine to the bottom of the table. Once that is complete, you have your switch machine mounted. And all that is left uh, underneath the table is to mount your uh, uh, connecting block wherever you want it, like I would put it over here maybe, um, and screw it to the side piece or wh whatever is convenient, and then all my wiring uh, is complete from there. And the final thing that we have to do then is to cut off the um, top part of the, the piano wire, I would suggest that you not use uh, your um, the, the rail clippers everybody uses. Don't use those. You'll ruin them. That's very hard. I went and got a pair of, of uh, wire cutters from uh, Lowe's and I snip it off. It's a 
very hard, and then there might be just a little bit left on top, and you can uh, grind that down with a Dremel tool and uh, make it uh, so that it's smooth, doesn't catch on anything. So here's the smale. I took it out just to show you what it looks like uh, with the wire. That's the length of wire that uh, we use off of that 36 inch piece of piano wire that I bought. Uh, if the tension is not enough, you can slide this uh, piece here up or down to make it work better or maybe not as hard depending on what you need. And um, like I say, I find they all work pretty good when I put them on just about like that. Mount them under there, start them up, and they work great. Okay, I hope this helps. I hope uh, you'll enjoy mounting your uh, tortoise or the snail. I hope you try the snail and like it. I do, and uh, would love to hear if you have any comments.